Hi everyone, welcome back to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a review of the SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom on PC. SpongeBob Square SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom on PC is a PC game that came out with the big console version of the release of the of the GOAT SpongeBob game, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. We already reviewed the console version of the game earlier on in the summer. Now it is time that we're going to review the PC version of this game. Game that also came out on October 31st, 2003. But this was not not just a P PC, the, the console version. It's not like the console version is supported on PC. Unlike what we see with video games nowadays, like with Rehydrated. When um, Rehydrated it, got, it was on PC, but it wasn't its own separate game. But back in the day, they couldn't do that. You couldn't just port a console game like BFBB onto a PC. So instead, they decided to make their own version of the game, a point-and-click adventure that had none of the exact same features as of the original Battle for Bikini Bottom. The original Battle for Bikini Bottom had 13 levels, featuring Bikini Bottom, Jellyfish Fields, Downtown Bikini Bottom, Goo Lagoon, Poseidon, Rock Bottom, The Mermelair, Sand Mountain, Industrial Park, Kelp Forest, The Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, Spongebob's Dream, and The Chum Bucket Lab. Meanwhile, this game only features 5 out of the 12, 5 out of the 13 levels from the original, as they only feature Downtown Bikini Bottom, The Mermelair, Kelp Forest, The Flying Dutchman's Graveyard, and The Chum Bucket Lab. All the other levels like Bikini Bottom, Jellyfish Fields, um, Goo Lagoon, Poseidon, Rock Bottom, Sand Mountain, Industrial Park, SpongeBob Dream were all not featured in the game, which is really, really unfortunate. I sure do wish, wish this game um could have had could have had those characters in the game. Not characters. I wish they could have had those levels in the game. Also, as far as characters in this game, the original Battle for Bikini Bottom featured over 14 characters. Being Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Plankton, Karen, Gary, Mermaid Man, Barnacle Boy, Bubble Buddy, Mrs. Puff, and Larry. As well as some other characters like King Neptune, John Yelaine, the realistic being the realistic fish head, the box office guy, and a bunch of other random NPCs around, including Old Man Jenkins. But in this game, I mean, we can, um, but in this game, in this game only features the, um, Johnny Elaine, the talking fish head, Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Gary, Plankton, Karen, and that's it. It doesn't feature any of the other characters we see in the original game. We don't have King Neptune, we don't have Mrs. Puff, we don't have Larry, no Bubble Buddy, no Flying Dutchman. And none of them were in this game. It was kind of unfortunate. As far as the voice acting, it's pretty good. Better than the original. Mermaid, we are still missing though, Mermaid, we are still missing Mermaid Man and Mr. Krabs. But some of Mr. Krabs' lines made it in this game as of reused lines from Employee of the Month. So, um... So, um, yeah, so they, they took some lines from him, but they also do have Joe White, so... I mean, the voice acting cast had more of the original reprised roles, roles um, unlike the original, because we had part of Mr. Krabs, but not all of them. So this game revolves around mini games, which is something really unfortunate. Finally, every single thing in this game is mini games, which is really unfortunate. I wish there was more like actual point and click adventure, like what we saw in the first first PC game, Employee of the Month. Which is, you know, it's really unfortunate it couldn't turn out that way. So, all, so there's just a bunch of mini games, and then every single level of a mini game, of every single level, each level I think features six mini games. And one of those mini games is a trivia challenge, challenge where you have to do trivia about a certain SpongeBob character. You have to get a certain amount right in order to, um. In order to answer correctly, and in order to unlock a character, they can play throughout the level. And we have, um, 
In downtown McKinney Bottom, you have to enter trivia to unlock Patrick. In, um, in the Mermelair, you have Squidward. In Kelp Forest, you have Gary. The Flying Legends Graveyard, you have Mr. Krabs. And in the Chum Bucket, you have Sandy. So there's not that much battling robots in this game, as you probably just have to avoid them. Robots appear in all the mini games, but you just mainly have to avoid them. You're no, there's no fighting and defeating them. Unlike in some of the mini games in the graveyard with Mr. Krabs. But now, unlike in the original Battle for King Bomb, um, with the Miss, some mini games you can play as different characters. Like you, in some mini games, you can play as um, Patrick. In some mini games, you can play play as Patrick. Patrick, but they the only you know, but the only time you can play as these characters is in the level you unlock them for the trivia. So you can only play as Patrick in downtown. You can't play him in Kelp Forest. In this game, probably most of the time you just play as SpongeBob. And not even all the all the games are dealing with um, trivia question or not even dealing with battling or avoiding the robots. Some of them is just like. Mem like what you see here, manhole memories. Probably where you have to flip two of the exact same characters and you have to remember where they're at. And then there's trivia. There's also a bunch of other stuff. You probably almost have a version of the Google Snake game in um in Kelp Forest is Gary, where I have to eat the trails without hitting we have to eat the thing while trying not to collide with walls or your own slime trail. So I don't know if that's a copy of Google Snake game. I don't know how long the Google Snake game has been around, but it's almost like a copy of that, almost. So, uh, so yeah, this game is pretty alright, right, but I do feel as if it's missing potential. All the, all the, all the models in this game, game are practically imported from Employee of the Month as well. I feel as if this game has missed out and lost a bunch of opportunity. I think this game could have been better. I wish there was more point and click adventure like what we saw in Employee of the Month. Employee of the Month, there was like a lot of, um... And there was a lot of point and click adventure, finding items, talking to characters. I wish this is what that was, it was like. Like, and it could feature, imagine like you could have like done this with every single level and make them really big and explorable. There's so many, there's so much, like, missed opportunity when it comes to, when it came to this, when it came to this game and the point and click adventure. I wish it could have been better. Out of all four point and click Spongebob games that, that exists, this one is by far the worst one. I have to give this a 5 out of 10. The only thing that says better is more playable characters and, and, um, more better characters and more reprised roles. So yeah, not really that much to say on this. Also, all the robot models are practically, um... Are practically not exactly the same as, as um, any of console versions. Besides the looks of, there's one robot that you can actually see that's in this game. It looks like the exact ones you can see from... There's one you can, there's this one robot model is actually can, that's in this game can actually be seen in the movie theater of the original Battle for Bikini Bottom. It almost looks like a sleepy time robot. Well, well the robots in this game are practically almost matched a certain level. Oh, well, you're in. Downtown robots are almost like the one that are, that are playing. I mean, all the robots in, in Mermel Air almost like like rocks almost and mash in. All the robots in Kelp Forest almost look like um like the ones you'd see like they're chomping through. I mean, almost like in something you'd see in a forest. All the robots in the graveyard are pirates, and then the ones in the Chum Bucket are practically just their regular versions. There's also glitches on some version of the piece of this PC game in that you can see. Now you can see where black doesn't appear, like you'll see like in eye colors and stuff like that where this, the black does not appear. It just uses see-through. I hope this doesn't happen to me when I do my walkthrough of this game, coming up soon. Today, today I'm sorry, but yesterday I could not do my rehydrated part, I was kind of busy, so I could not 
to get I was too busy to get the camera set set up. I'd almost completely forgotten about it. It kinda got too late. Too late and I was kinda busy yesterday. So today I'll be doing two parts. Oh there's an ad 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 oh I gotta skip gotta skip gotta skip. Yeah, this is all Kayona Kukira's footage, so credit to him. So I haven't done the walkthrough yet. So yeah, I couldn't do that. So I'm gonna try to finish rehydrated this week. I may have to do three parts tomorrow or do a part today and two parts tomorrow. It just depends on the um circum the circumstances. I I'm kind of busy as well today. Today, so I'll have so I'll have to see next. Then I'm gonna start employee of the month next week, and then that'll last for two weeks, and then I'll do um BFBB PC immediately afterwards. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's what it's going to be looking like for, for, for the summer. Don't worry, I don't have enough time to get through the rest of Rehydrated. And, um, I don't have enough time to get through the rest of Rehydrated, Employee of the Month, and the FBB PC, and the Flights Camera Fans PC by the end of the month. By the end of the summer. Also, the trivia robots are exactly the same, and all the trivia questions are pretty easy, by the way. Almost meant, this, this game is kind of almost meant for, like, a five-year-old. Kind of unlike the um thing. I wish Heavy Iron could have worked on the PC version because I think all games made this, not Heavy Iron. They did Heavy Iron just like give them the basic storylines so that way they can try to simulate it. So yeah, that's practically um, all my thoughts on this game. You know, it, it, this game had uh, so much potential to be just as good as the console version. You know, what if it was just all point and click adventure and there's like hardly any. Like the mini games are okay, like what we'll see in Lights, Camera, Pants, PC. The mini games are okay. The mini games are okay to put in every now and again, like what you see in Lights, Camera, Pants. But you know, Lights, Camera, Pants, PC also did have a lot of did have Lights, Camera, Pants did have a lot of point and click adventure of when you find items. I just wish this game was like that. Like they all had big explorable levels, telling the characters to go do things. Maybe a mini game every now and again. Maybe two mini games in a in a level. Well, these were like big open world, big explorable areas. Areas I can just point and click through. Each level almost had the exact same length as the console version does. Does it featured more characters like Bubble Buddy, Larry, Mrs. Puff, King Neptune, the Flying Dutchman. You know, then this game could have been amazing. It would have been cool like that, and we could have also almost gotten a remake of it as well, so, yeah. So that'll be the end of today's, today's review, you know, 5 out of 10, had so much potential, full, full, and could to be an amazing PC game, almost, it could have had potential to be the best one out of the entire quadrilogy of the PC games. So that'll be it for this review, and the next review, we'll review Lights, Camera, Pants on PC. So that'll be the end of today's video. We'll see you all next time. And have a God blessing good day.